Hello, this is the first uh, of many lectures that are uh, put online here for you to watch at home uh, for fine arts class. Uh, this is the music half of the class, the first half, so uh, let's get started. Uh, what's on the agenda for today? It's going to be a couple things. We're going to talk about taking notes quickly, uh, and then we're going to talk uh, about the basics, the mechanics of sound, how sound works. And we're going to talk about the relationship between sound and technology over the years, very briefly. Uh, and then uh, we're going to talk about the three ways of listening to music as described by Aaron Copland, uh, the famous American composer. So, first, taking notes. Um, because this is the first uh, of these videos that is that you'll be watching, um, it's important that you know that you're going to be quizzed on this stuff, and this stuff is going to be a part of your grade. Um, so it's very important that you take notes while you're sitting there, right there where you are, uh, wherever you are sitting in front of your computer, at home, or wherever, library. Um, make sure you're writing this down in your notebook. Um, this is going to be sort of your textbook for the class. As you know, there isn't a, uh, a big, thick textbook uh, with all kinds of information, so this is it. So you need to write these things down in your notebook so you can um, reference them in class. And like I said, you're going to be quizzed on it, so you should be writing it down right now. So, okay, moving on. So, learning to listen to music, like anything, um, takes practice. It takes practice. Uh, so people need to, everybody, needs to spend some thoughtful time <coughs> learning uh, to listen to music in different ways. Of course, everyone, anyone can listen to music, uh, but it takes practice to really be able to pick out all the different elements of music that we're going to be talking about. So we'll be practicing in class quite a bit, and we'll talk about that more, but that's just food for thought there for you. Okay, let's talk about how sound works. So just on a basic physical level, talking about the laws of physics here, what is sound? So sound is literally vibrations that move through the air. They touch your eardrum, uh, your brain interprets those sounds, um, and uh, makes them into what we consider to be sound. Uh, the neurons shoot around in different areas of your brain and we interpret in, in terms of pitch, color, volume, and all those other kinds of things. So that's that. Um, the midsection of your brain uh, is the part that determines our emotional response. So first we just get the sound in our brain and the midsection can uh, interpret it for, on an emotional level. Um, and then that can, uh, depending on how you like the music or how it affects you um, can result in increased levels of dopamine which make you feel good. Um, the principles of acoustics are invariable. That means no matter what the style of music is, of course the laws of physics never change. So the style of music may change, the pitch, the color, the volume, the artist, the style, whatever, uh, but this, the very basic uh, principles of physics that we're talking about here that make up sound, of course, don't change. Might, that might sound obvious, but maybe you've never thought about it before. Or maybe you have. Okay, moving on. Uh, more about how sound works. So, low pitches, so that's low sounds, uh, versus high pitches, which are high sounds. So, low pitches and high pitches. Okay, uh, Low pitches uh, literally vibrate more slowly. We talked about sound being a, a vibration. So low pitches are the ones that um, have long sound waves, uh, whereas, by contrast, the uh, high pitches um, move more rapidly and they have shorter waves. So from a physical standpoint, that's um, the difference. Um, so a little bit about sound and technology. Um, so the way that we've music has existed uh, in human, humanity for longer than it's been written down, probably, um, and it's existed in various forms over the years. Uh, to begin with, uh, it was all enjoyed in person, from one person to another, not like this through a computer or something, but in the presence of someone else. It was an oral tradition, meaning uh, that you would sing it or uh, hear it. Uh, I guess it would also be an aural tradition, A-U-R-A-L tradition as well. So it was enjoyed in sort of uh, groups of people. Then later on, uh, the first uh, examples of written music that uh, are 
known of at this point, or uh, at least in terms of Western music that we talk about, um, were around 900 CE. Um, and then that, of course, opened a whole new possibility where people could um, perform other people's music for the first time, uh, or especially longer and more complicated uh, compositions, uh, which we're going to get into more later. Uh, and then in 1877, there's another huge game changer, uh, almost as huge, or maybe just as much, debatably, uh, as the advent of written music was uh, the phonograph, um, invented by Thomas Edison, which, interestingly, was actually originally um, invented for voice. He didn't, uh, apparently, so I hear, wasn't uh, interested at first in the idea of recording music. He was only interested in recording the sounds of people talking, but then, of course, uh, people began quickly to realize the uh, implications of being able to record sound, and, and this changed everything. Uh, and then, of course, digital technology that developed in the 80s and earlier, and then also um, into today, uh, continues to change the face of how we listen to music. Um, we're living in a really exciting time. Things are rapidly changing from things like... Um, you know, Napster and Spotify and Pandora and iPods and all kinds of stuff have really only developed in the in the last couple of decades, so we're in a pretty pretty cool time. So there you have it. Um, so there are three ways of listening to music, um, according to the composer Aaron Copland. Aaron Copland lived from 1900 to 1990. Uh, he was a well-known American composer. Um, I'm sure you've heard some of his pieces, even if you don't know it. We'll listen to some of his stuff in class. Anyways, he had a theory uh, and I, a way of talking about listening that incorporates three ways. The first is sensual. So we perceive and enjoy the music, but we're not really thinking about it. We're not intellectually involved. Maybe it's when you're sitting in a restaurant. I'm guessing this is the way that most novice non-musicians uh, sort of listen to music. It's background music. You're not really paying attention to it in any way. Uh, you're sitting in a restaurant. You're, some people listen to it while they're studying or whatever. So the first one is sensual. Next one is expressive. Um, so expressive listening is when we're a little more attentive. Uh, it's engaging our mind, um, and then we're sort of applying some extra musical uh, things to it, so non-musical ideas into music. So this isn't when you're sitting in the restaurant and just sort of letting it fly by you, or listening to it, not really listening to it while you're studying. This is listening to a piece of music thinking about it, focusing on it, and letting it uh, have an effect on you on an emotional level. So the last one, sort of the most in-depth, uh, slightly different than expressive, is musical. So there's a musical way to listen to music, which sounds kind of silly, I guess. Um, but musical uh, is when you focus your attention on the music itself. You enjoy uh, the way that the melody, the harmony, the color, the tam which is the timbre, the form, all those things uh, play against and with each other uh, and make that whatever you're listening to unique. So um, this is where knowledge of the elements of music, uh, the terminology of music, and all that kind of stuff um, can help you and will help you. So in this class, uh, my goal for you is to have you be able to listen to music in all three ways so you, that you can um, Appreciate it, hopefully, um, all different types of music in a different way that you did when you did before you took this class. So, to recap what we talked about today, we talked about taking notes, we talked a little bit about the mechanics of sound, the laws of physics, just briefly, we talked a little bit about sound and technology, and then we talked about Aaron Copeland's uh, three ways of listening to music. So, that is the end of our first video. Make sure that you took some notes. If you didn't get anything, make sure to go back in there. Also, please note that sometimes I say things that aren't written down on the slides here uh, that should be written down. So make sure that you get all those as well. So, all right. See you next time.